Prepare to experience the strongest radio allowable by law. Secrets will be revealed. Myths dispelled. From the studio gym where excuses never apply. It's Superhuman Radio with your host, Carl Lenore. Hey, hey, welcome back to another episode of Superhuman Radio. Today is October 15th, 2020, and uh, we have a nice show planned for you today. Uh, During the first hour, we're going to be talking uh, with Marette Traber. Uh, I hope I pronounced it right. I practiced before the show, but that's me. Um, We're going to be talking about vitamin E. Excuse me, the uh, allergies in the Ohio Valley are plaguing me. We're going to be talking about vitamin E from a standpoint of a neonatal, uh, when moms are at that age of uh, having babies or in the process of having babies, the importance of vitamin E, and uh, that'll be during the first hour. And then at the second hour, we're going to be joined by uh, Danny, uh, Dr. Danny uh, Harans and Dr. William Seeds from Chronomics uh, to talk to the audience about what the holdup was with their epigenetic tests. They are being delivered now. I got mine yesterday in the mail, in the email. I haven't looked at it yet, uh, but we have had some people look at theirs, and we have some questions that we're going to be able to answer a little bit later in the show. Um, before we start, of course, I have to thank my title sponsor, Legendary Foods. If you are a low-carb, low-sugar, high-protein person, you'll love their website, their nut butters, their seasoned almonds, and most notably, their tasty pastry, which is basically a Pop-Tart with nine grams of high-leucine, high-quality uh, protein and less than one gram of sugar. And now that the kids are going back to school, buy them, put them in their lunch boxes. They won't know they're eating something good. Eatlegendary.com. Use the code SHR10 for 10% off your entire order. And without further delay, and let me get rid of that image. Marette, how are you? Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much, Carl, for having me on your show. I'm always excited to talk about vitamin E. And really, you, you've studied vitamin E for a very long time, haven't you? Yeah, I hate to say it, but since I was in kindergarten, it feels like, you know, the 80s. I remember the 80s, of course. <laughs> yes, I do, I do. So um, before we talk about this particular study, which uh, shows provo- profound um, unwanted effects in the development of the fetal brain with the lack of vitamin E, What research preceded this that uh, kind of made you think you needed to do this one? Well, I actually got into studies of vitamin E when I was working in New York City at NYU Medical Center with Herb Caden. He was one of the pioneers discovering vitamin E deficiency actually affects humans. And I think everybody was pretty much saying, well, yeah, you can show it in rats, you could screw up their diets, but people not so much. And we started using stable isotope labeled vitamin E and Mm -hmm. mass spectrometry. And we could actually demonstrate that people have a protein in their liver that recognizes alpha tocopherol. It's like a key in a lock system when you eat all kinds of different forms of vitamin E, the special one is alpha tocopherol. It binds to this protein, and this protein's job is to regulate vitamin E concentrations in the body. And what was stunning about this is that previously nobody knew it. We all kind of thought, hey, gamma tocopherol is really high in the American diet. That must be important. And it turns out the human body can't convert the forms of vitamin E, and it especially picks out alpha tocopherol. So since we're talking about these uh, different forms of vitamin E, in nature, uh, there exists eight. 
their tocotrienols. Is that how the right way to pronounce it? Tocotrienol yeah, yeah. and tocopherols. And so um, it, it's, I look to evolution for everything. I, I'm a firm believer. And if you look at, if you take any situation with the human body and you look at why it would benefit us from a, an evolutionary perspective or why it would harm us from an evolutionary perspective, everything kind of comes out. Why, why would we be exposed through uh, plant sources of vitamin E with all eight of these and we really only use one? The rest of them are excreted, right? Yeah, and it's an excellent question. And actually, I was very dubious that, you know, it's fat soluble. It All these different forms, plants make them. They must be important. And it turns out that plants, you know, they're stuck where they are. The sun comes out, shines UV light on them. They need to protect themselves from this oxidant environment. So they make all kinds of antioxidants in addition to vitamin E. But if you look through evolution, there has been a protein preferring alpha tocopherol in most animals. Mm. Um, it's very surprising. I this protein I was talking about that's in the human liver is the one that you can actually find in salmon liver. You can find it. Um, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I was trained as a human nutritionist. So evolutionary biology is, is not really something I've been worked on hard, but it surprised me. And, um, I've done a lot of work looking at, well, chemically, if these are all antioxidants, what's the difference? And it turns out something like gamma tocopherol, when it becomes a radical, when it's doing its job, it actually becomes activated and it can react with other molecules and cause problems. Vitamin E, alpha tocopherol, when it becomes a radical, it sits there and waits around until it can find some vitamin C and the vitamin C reduces the radical. We mm. now have the unreacted form of alpha tocopherol. And this explains why you need to eat vitamin C every day because you're destroying your vitamin C, protecting yourself from radicals. Right. So, um, I should also say to the audience that, that while you are at Oregon State, you are actually in the Linus Pauling lab, correct? Um, the Linus Pauling Institute. It's an entire institute right. founded by Linus Pauling. Yeah. And you and you are an Ava Helen Pauling professor, which is a yeah. very highly regarded professorship within the Linus Pauling Institute, correct? That's absolutely true. I'm very proud of that because um, it's... It says my peers recognize me for the work I've done. Right. And the reason I say that now is because we're talking about vitamins and no one contributed more to understanding antioxidants and vitamins in general than Linus Pauling. Uh, I would say but, that's true. Yeah. I mean, no, it, it's undisputed. Everybody knows Linus Pauling, for, especially for vitamin C. We're talking about vitamin E, but we're talking about vitamin C at the same time. So let's, let's now talk about your research. Tell me... Um, how your research was designed using zebrafish. And we've actually had a uh, professor Robin Tangay on the show before she talked about the five G study. And my audience has learned why zebrafish are ideal for these types of tests. But in case they missed that episode, explain why we use zebrafish for these types of tests. Well, I think in general, people are, they frown upon the idea of using human fetuses for research. Um, if you want to try and study vitamin E, it was discovered because it protects fetuses. And so to look at rodents, mice or rats, it, you're, you kill a lot of animals. And so I always thought, I don't want to kill a lot of animals. I, I don't think it's going to be easy to do those kinds of studies. And I went to a lecture by Robin Tangway, and she was just fantastic. She was explaining how you can have hundreds of animals in a group. You can get them to do um, 
essentially toxicology research. She has robots, she has high throughput screening. She actually is looking for toxins in the environment mm -hmm. using zebrafish studies. And I said, well, that's all swell and fine, but it's a fish for God's sakes. I'm interested yeah. in human nutrition, right? And she was like, yeah, but 70% of the genes are identical or homologous, which means they're close to the same. They have the same function. And this would allow you to do zebrafish research and look at vitamin E. And I said, well, that's great. Um, I wanna make a vitamin E deficient diet for those zebrafish. And she said, well, there's a little bit of a problem because we feed them paramecium. And I went, paramecium, these are little, you know, tiny worms and bugs. Common, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um, I'm not going to figure out how to make a paramecium vitamin E deficient so I can. So we, the first, it was like the first year and a half, two years, we had to figure out how do you make a defined diet for zebrafish? So that took some work. And then we fed the animals and the human, the adults were fine, but the eggs, oh my God, the eggs got into so much trouble. A zebrafish is beautiful because it goes from an egg to a swimming fish in five days. Wow. So yeah, it was like, Okay, I, my, my research is cooking with gas now. Um, we can do this. And so we discovered that 80% of the animals were deformed or dead, these little embryos, if they didn't have vitamin E in the diets of the mothers. Right. And it's like the, the eggs are not fed at all. So we have a closed system. Right. The moms, the moms are laying what they think are absolutely the perfect egg that's going to grow into a fine baby. And by the way, the moms lay almost a hundred eggs, so we got plenty of eggs. Right. Wow. And that's it, amazing. And, and five day maturation. That's like high speed studies. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and so the, the downside is it takes about two months, three months to get the adults E deficient, but once we got E deficient moms, we can go for probably nine months a year of them laying eggs every two weeks. We get embryos to study. So we've done tons of studies. We've published about 16 papers now over about the last eight years showing how vitamin E deficiency hurts the animal. We've looked at fats because vitamin E is fat soluble. And we've studied how are the fats changed? How are they oxidized? What lipids in particular? You've, you've heard of polyunsaturated fats. You've right. heard of fish oils. Well, it's exactly that. It is the DHA, docosahexanoic acid, right. Right. that is oxidized in these E deficient animals. And we went, wow, okay, we're, we're, we're on the track now. Right. Well, it's, it's more complicated than that. The membrane of every cell has phospholipids. And these phospholipids are called, phos some of them, phosphatidylcholine. And phosphatidylcholine with DHA, that's the one that's getting destroyed in the zebrafish embryo. It's also destroyed in the zebrafish brain of the adult animals. So all of your listeners who say, well, I'm not going to get pregnant. I don't care. Vitamin E is important for your brain. And See, it I'm, doesn't I'm, matter. I was curious about the mature fish, the adult fish, the moms that were laying and the males that were in. They showed no uh, changes at all. I mean, oh. I'm, thinking, I'm thinking vitamin E deficiency may be one of the contributors to the widespread plague of neuropathy we have in this country, the demyelination of nerves. You think that it plays a role in that? Not in demyelination. It turns out that vitamin E is especially needed by the large caliber axons in the sensory nervous system. So... E-deficient children, 
and usually they're children because um, it's a genetic defect in that protein I talked about. Mm -hmm. it turns out to be named the alpha tocopherol transfer protein. Uh, but I don't think it, it trans <laughs> yeah, transferase or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we call it TTP, but that <laughs> protein um, binds alpha tocopherol. And if you have a genetic defect, you become vitamin E deficient. And two-year-old children were dying because they had a genetic defect. And it's a very rare disorder. There are only probably um, 100 people in the world that have been described to have this. But largely, it is such a uh, severe defect that most of the kids don't even, I think they they probably are not even born. But um, back to this, I, it seems like I'm telling you this very long, complicated yeah, no, story. Right. You're doing an, an excellent job. So go ahead. <laughs> well, back to my zebrafish, the adults, the brains, the muscles, the livers, the hearts, they're all screwed up. The, we we're, we're doing a study right now uh, where we're looking at those year old fish and they don't swim as well. We're doing an eye test because we think they don't see as well. We've got data showing they've got oxidation going on in the eyes. By the way, while we're giving hints to people, please wear sunglasses when you go out. The UV light <laughs> of the sun is very bad for your eyes. So um, that's always an important tip, I think. Mm -hmm. um, not only wear sunscreen, but wear sunglasses. Okay, so my baby fish, um, we have really fancy mass spec facilities at Oregon State University. And so my colleagues were doing something called lipidomics. And I said, whoa, what is that, lipidomics? And they said, well, we just take an extract of the entire animal and we inject it in the machine and the machine can measure everything. And I said, oh my God, I want to do that. And that's how we figured out that it is exactly phosphatidylcholine with a DHA that is being oxidized. I mean, it's like a in, the, in the absence of vitamin E, in the absence exactly. of exactly. Wow. So you know, we just we just talked about anticholinergic drugs and how they're actually causing people to progress faster in Alzheimer's disease. Many of them are over the counter, and so we were talking about cholinergic effects and acetylcholine and all that sort of stuff. And what you're talking about here is is critical too because. You could be eating all the egg yolks you want and all this other stuff, but it's going to be burnt away, oxidized, before it could be used at the synapses of nerves. Well, I, I'm not sure I'm going to go there yet, but okay. I can tell you that the E-deficient animals are oxidizing those fatty acids. And the animal, remember in my embryo, it's a closed system. So we don't have any way of getting new food so they have to decide, am I going to take that phospholipid and the choline there? Am I going to maintain a membrane or am I going to take the choline to use as a neurotransmitter? Or mm -hmm. am I going to use the choline to make methyl groups for epigenetic regulation? Right. You know, it's like, all right, we've got a bank account. We've only got so much in it. And well, how are you going to doll it out? Right. right. And so what we discovered, not only with the lipidomics, where you only look at fat, metabolomics, we look at metabolites. So now we're talking glucose. And I actually heard, <laughs> I actually heard a lecture on Alzheimer's disease and why do neurons in the brain die? And they ran out of glucose. And I said, we haven't even looked at glucose. And I was in Germany at the time. I called my student up. Well, I emailed her. I'm not as bad as calling from Germany in the middle of the night and said, I heard this lecture, glucose is important. Do we have any data on glucose? She was 
she was a crazy hard worker. She was up in the middle of the night, saw my email, went through the data, sent me back the results and said, yes, glucose is down in the E-deficient fish. And I said, wow, that is so exciting. And I talked to the scientist, Dr. Enrique Cadenas from USC Pharmacology. And he basically said, wow, that is so important. You have to test it out, measure their oxygen consumption, measure their um, ability to use glucose. Um, we can do all kinds of assays. Let's just get on the stick and do this. And we, we literally, supplemented the E deficient eggs with more glucose. And I'm not an advocate, we shouldn't run out and eat sugar, but basically right. these animals were running out of glucose and therefore they didn't have enough energy to even protect themselves from antioxidant, from oxidative stress by recycling their antioxidants. But the the gist of the story is vitamin E is like a little spider web kind of thing that you if you lose vitamin E, you start losing other things. And pretty soon, all kinds of systems, all kinds of pathways are messed up. And so we saw choline was down which means epigenetic regulation. We mm -hmm. saw glucose was down, which means their whole ability to protect themselves. And they need glucose to build new cells in this growing embryo. And so um, I was very jazzed about that. But when I said, okay, what's really happening first in this developing egg, the first thing that happens is you form a neural tube. And mm -hmm. I said, we must have neural tube defects. And what happened is the reviewers of my NIH grant said, well, it's a nice hypothesis, but show us the data that there's actually a neural tube defect. And I thought, really? How do you <laughs> this do is it? What you're talking about very small brains too, right? I mean, it's... Um, you're talking something that's smaller than a, a, a head of a pin. Right. And this is an egg that's turning into an animal. And so I have an incredibly talented PhD student, Brian Head. And Brian said, okay, I will learn how to do in situ hybridization. I will look for genes that are involved in developing the neural tube. So when you think neural tube defects and folic acid deficiency, and we've given all kinds of folic acid in the diet now, and we're trying to protect them, we're, we're looking to protect pregnant moms by putting folic acid in the food. It all worked, sort of. Right. But we still have moms who are having miscarriages, and everybody is scratching their heads. How is this possible? We have, you know, it's like healthcare in America. We have a great healthcare system. We have great nutrition. Um, then why is this happening? I hope you heard the sarcasm there. I, I think <laughs> what we're concerned about is that people are not eating great diets. They're eating crummy diets. They're not getting their all of the nutrients, let alone all of those bioactive compounds that are in foods. Mm -hmm. And so there's huge concern. And what we did for this study with the zebrafish is started looking, okay, we find big changes in the biochemistry at 24 hours, at 48 hours. But my students said, well, if we see changes already at 24 hours, let's go backwards. Let's go to 12 hours. Let's go to six hours. Can we actually say, when is this happening? Right. So what you have to understand about the zebrafish is you flick on the lights and the, the fish spawn on command. You Ooh. know exactly how old those eggs are. Exactly. So you get a whole cohort 
that's all the same age. They're behaving nicely. They're just growing along. Everything looks good. And then it's not. And what I think is exciting about this study is we started looking for that liver protein. Remember, we talked yeah. at the beginning about the liver to cofferol transfer protein. That protein binds vitamin E. Well, these fish don't have a liver until 48 hours. Oh, wow. And when we looked for the gene for this protein, we found it at six hours. We found it at 12 hours. We found it at 24 hours. And we even knocked it down so that no gene is expressed. Well, if you do that, the animals are all dead by 24 hours. Wow. So you can't do a study with dead fish. So we went back to our diet fish. And my student, Brian, looked for, can we actually say, where is the tocopherol transfer protein? Since there is no liver, where is it? Right. Well, the yolk, you know, when you have a chicken egg, you have this mm -hmm. nice yellow yolk. Well, mm -hmm. the zebrafish, the same thing. You have a big yolk and the embryo starts forming on the edges of the yolk. Well, the idea of the yolk is all the nutrition is there to be um, used as food by the animal and you're dissolving the yolk. So we found the tocopherol transfer protein is in that yolk. Yeah. But that's not where most of it was. Most of it was on the edges of the neural tube. So you can have to imagine the tube, as I look at my camera here and try and figure out how to show you a tube. So here's the tube and it folds over and then it becomes a brain. Okay. And the rest of the tube becomes the spinal cord. And what was happening is on these edges that are folding together, those edges, is where the tocopherol transfer protein is. Wow. Now, what we're on hot on the trail of is, is the tocopherol transfer protein there because there's something about that protein that's really necessary, that it's doing something else? Or the more obvious question, it's there because it's putting alpha tocopherol right there at that cutting edge of development of the brain right. to help the brain form. Right. Um, I am so a variety of different differentiation steps, uh, you know, actually making the brain. And in fact, I, I wanted to get this in real quick before we take a break. Um, there are very, there are two very common neural tube defects in human children. Spinal bifida is one of them. So could it be that moms who give birth to children with these defects may have been vitamin E deficient during their pregnancy? The short answer is maybe. Yeah. We that, don't that's know. That's a responsible we have, that's a answer, right? Yeah, we don't know. But what I would tell you is what we're seeing with the fish biochemistry is that we're depleting choline. And choline and folic acid work together to promote how well folic acid works. Right. And so if you've not got enough choline, you're in trouble. And I would point out the other thing is anencephaly means that the brain is outside the neural tube also. So it's a misforming of the brain. And that is exactly where we're seeing trouble with vitamin E in the fish. So, so far, we've only done this in the fish. There's at least one epidemiologic study done in women looking at malnourished women in Nepal. And there they found women who have low serum vitamin E levels had a higher risk of miscarriage. Now, that's not proof. But yeah, it's correlation. It's just correlation. Yeah. But still, give you give you a reason to do a study. Huh. You know. And what I'd like to emphasize to any of your listeners who are thinking that they might want to get pregnant, 
this is the time. You have to actually have enough vitamin E before you get pregnant. Where we're seeing the critical need for vitamin E in the embryo is a quest is a roughly equivalent to 22 days in human pregnancy. Wow. Yeah, it's too late to respond with neonatal vitamins at your doctor's office when that happens. Exactly. And what terrifies me is those teenage girls that accidentally get pregnant, who've been eating, you know, really crappy diets because they want to be skinny and beautiful. Right. It's... Tragic. Yeah. It's really tragic. It's, you know, so many people think food doesn't play a role in the etiology of various diseases, and they're just so wrong. I want to take a quick commercial break. I have a lot of questions. Um, okay. Now, now that you've kind of set the table, I have a lot of questions that I'm sure the audience uh, wants answers to as well. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with more Superhuman Radio. Whether your goal is to build muscle or burn fat, you'll find everything you need at Redcon One. Need help getting a good night's sleep? Try Fade Out or the most popular pre-workout supplement on the market today, Total War. Sign up for their new transformation challenge and win $10,000 or shop for apparel that people at the gym will know that you are serious about your training. Need a testosterone booster that works? Check out Boomstick. Whatever you need, you'll find the best quality supplements on the market at Redcon One. Go to redcon1.com. That's R-E-D-C-O-N, the number one, dot com, or go to superhumanradio.net and click the Redcon 1 banner ad today. Chronic stress leaves us tired, distracted, and physically vulnerable. Apollo Neuro is here to help you take control. Apollo Neuro is a new wearable that trains your nervous system to be more resilient to stress. Apollo's gentle vibrations use your sense of touch to help you recover from stress, going from fight or flight to rest and digest so you can relax, get to sleep, focus, and stay healthy. Developed by physicians and neuroscientists, Apollo Neuro has been tested in multiple clinical trials and is proven to improve heart rate variability, the key biometric of stress. Special offer for friends of Superhuman Radio. Try Apollo Neuro today and get 15% off your purchase at apolloneuro.com slash superhuman. That's A-P-O-L-L-O-N-E-U-R-O dot com slash superhuman. Do you remember those delicious toaster pastries you had when you were a kid? You know, the rectangular sugar-filled snacks? Well, guess what? Legendary Foods has just made low-carb toaster pastry. This is the first of its kind, and honestly, these things are amazing. They have three to four net carb, less than one gram of sugar, and nine grams of protein. You can eat them right out of the wrapper or lightly toast them. The only question is, which flavor? Strawberry or brown sugar cinnamon? They're available at eatlegendary.com and Amazon. Whether your goal is to build muscle or burn fat, you'll find everything you need at Redcon 1. Need help getting a good night's sleep? Try Fade Out or the most popular pre-workout supplement on the market today, Total War. Sign up for their new transformation challenge and win $10,000 or shop for apparel that people at the gym will know that you are serious about your training. Need a testosterone booster that works? Check out Boom Stick. Whatever you need, you'll find the best quality supplements on the market at Redcon 1. Go to redcon1.com. That's R-E-D-C-O-N, the number one, dot com, or go to superhumanradio.net and click the Redcon 1 banner ad today. Are you still on the fence about Body Protection Complex BPC Oral from drseeds.com? Listen to Maggie Kuhn, one of the owners of the C-Bus Lifting Company Gym in Columbus, Ohio. I had been having some bagging tendon issues that weren't injuries, just, just things that were annoying. You know, I'm 58 years old, so just older tendon kind of issues. For us powerlifters, you know, we really don't got training when we have just bagging issues. We just kind of keep pushing through. And I started the BPC. What I noticed was I was doing some heavy tricep stuff that um, that would have killed me um, before when I had an elbow problem and I was able to do that with literally no pain at all. Go to drseeds.com D-R-S-E-E-D-S dot com. Use coupon code SHR and save 20% off your bottle of BPC Body Protection Complex today. When craving a snack, reach for select savory snack sugar-free Biltong, the healthy alternative to sugar-laden beef jerky. They use a fattier cut of beef making it more tender and flavorful. For mealtime, choose from their 63 seasonings, which are sugar and additive free. From chipotle rub to savory pumpkin spice, you'll find an option to suit your palate. Go to shrnetwork.biz slash SSS today. Use code SHR team to save 15% on any meat snack or seasoning. Savor the flavor today. 
spit that out right now. This is the Superhuman Channel. Welcome back. We're talking with Marette Traber about how vitamin E affects the forming brain. But it also probably affects the adult brain, as you've been pointing out. Uh, the adult zebrafish didn't fare well either. Um, but the, the fact that the brain didn't form properly in the babies was much more uh, specific and apparent. So you uh, were on the team that came up with the USRDA for vitamin E every single day some time ago. So you, 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 this is a great question to ask you as opposed to anybody else in the world. <laughs> if, we, if we're not getting enough vitamin E, let's say, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of foods that are rich in vitamin E, you know, and most of them are oils because it's a fat soluble vitamin. Um, olive oil, for instance, or avocados or various nuts. If you're not eating these foods, then supplementation probably is a wise thing. So we've gone from the RDA, which a lot of people will argue will keep you alive but not optimize your body, to excessively high doses of all, all supplements across the board. What's, what's a reasonable dose of vitamin E to not only keep you from being deficient but also have an abundance enough for some of these other functions we're talking about, protecting the the, the DHEA and and so on, and, you know, and, and so on. That's an excellent question, and I hope you have another two or three hours so we can talk about this. <laughs> um, I seriously have been working on this problem for over thirty years, and the latest data we have is that you probably are using up about 15 milligrams a day. Now, where that's a big time concern is if you look at most of the dietary recommendations, they're saying eat 15 milligrams a day. <laughs> and probably 96% of women, that's just, 96% of American women don't get even 12. So we're short. I think um, men are almost equally as bad. They're probably at 90% because they're probably more willing to eat fat foods. Um, but I think eating nuts like almonds or hazelnuts, eating avocados, those are good fats. But as you say, some people don't want to eat those kinds of foods. They don't like them um, and would prefer a supplement. Now, there was a sort of terrifying study. It was called the SELECT trial, where they were looking at vitamin E to protect men and prostate cancer. I remember and that. I was going to ask you about that. They, they said, don't take vitamin E because it, it's linked to prostate cancer. Yeah, they said it was dangerous. And I looked at this and I said, well, I have, I literally tried to make lemonade out of lemons and, and got a grant funded saying, if vitamin E is dangerous, we need to study the toxicology. We need to over kill rats with vitamin E. And so we gave them injections of vitamin E. So absolutely, I knew in a little tiny rat body, 250 grams, I put one gram of vitamin E. It was huge. The animals didn't die. What they did is they bled a lot. And when we looked very- It does have a, th a blood thinning effect, right? Yeah, and we look very closely. You know funny? Anything that's anti-inflammatory seems to thin the blood. So vitamin E must have an anti-inflammatory component to it as well. What do you think? It's possible, but yeah. I wanted to tell you vitamin K. Vitamin K, there is an interaction between vitamin E and vitamin K. And if you take too much vitamin E, your vitamin K goes down. And there are all kinds of abnormalities people attribute to high levels of vitamin E intake. But it, when you look at these studies, they're always crazy. They're relatively few people, and they're 
all kinds of different things. Left ventricular dysfunction, there's hemorrhagic stroke, there's aortic stenosis, there's the prostate problem. Um, seems to me there's something else, but we'll skip over it for the moment. Right. All of those things are related to too little vitamin K. And when you think about the SELECT trial was done in men. And what do men eat? Meat and potatoes. Do they want to have a little romaine salad on the side? No, I don't think so. Right. And so the intake of vitamin K is critically important. And it turns out that there is an enzyme that activates vitamin K and turns it from the form that's in fruits and vegetables into something called menaquinone 4. We found in the brain, 80% of the brain vitamin K is as menaquinone 4. When we gave labeled vitamin K, it all went to the brain. And when we injected the rats with all that vitamin E, half of their vitamin K in the brain disappeared. And this didn't take months. This took less than three days. Wow. And I'm looking at this wow. going, wow, wow, wow is right. So I think if you're going to take vitamin E supplements, Make sure that you eat lots of green leafy vegetables. And if you hate those, <laughs> at least take a supplement that has vitamin K in it. And it sounds like you should take C as well. Vitamin C oh, as well. If you're taking vitamin E. So it sounds like C, E, and K uh, should absolutely. be always taken together. So, so in your theory, uh, your, 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 in your uh, uh, mind, what is an effective dose like, what is it an IU compared to, isn't one microgram, one IU or something like that? Oh, it's so complicated. And it's so complicated because the original ability to measure vitamin E because it's an antioxidant was um, very, very poor. It took a long time to figure out how to do that well. And so all of this, if you go to the store and you read the labels, you see it's well, is it tocopherol or tocopherol acetate? And is it tocotrienol? Which form is it? Um, you, and you, you literally have to take your magnifying glass with you because DL alpha tocopherol versus D alpha tocopherol, which well, is it? Right? It's a synthetic form of, uh, now that's been, that's not in a bad rap. It's actually been said that that will block the beneficial effects of, uh, of, of natural tocopherol. Um, I'm kind of on, on the uh, side that says that I don't actually agree with that. Um, it turns out that that protein, <laughs> we started talking about that protein, it's a lock and key thing. And it turns out that the protein recognizes how the structure of vitamin E looks. And so the structure of vitamin E fits into the protein. And it's very important because half of the synthetic does not match. So an IU was they, 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 call that, they call that chirality, I think, right? Uh, a, a, exactly. A there are yeah. eight different stereoisomers of alpha tocopherol in the synthetic. Four of them are 2R and four of them are 2S. The protein doesn't recognize the 2S they get metabolized and excreted. The two R forms are put into the plasma and they seem to work as antioxidants just fine. Mm. So that's where there is a big fight over what is an IU and how do you match it to milligrams. And basically the 2000 RDAs that I was involved with defined alpha tocopherol as 2R alpha tocopherol. It's the stereoisomer recognized by that protein. That's made all of those 400 IU people very confused because right. an that's IU... A, that's what this guy just said. He goes, I'm confused about tocopherol. <laughs> it's true. What can we take? What should we take? 
I think whatever is cheapest, which is, it turns out usually it's synthetic, um, but my, my concern is that you don't take too much because of the potential for driving down vitamin K. And honestly, one of the challenges of studying vitamin K is I said, oh, it's in the brain. It's not in the blood so much. And so mm -hmm. if you try and measure how much is in the blood, you don't know where you are. You'd have to biopsy and the brain. You'd have to do a punch biopsy. <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah. you know, we, we try and, you know, recruit subjects and damn, people don't want to have big, big needles put yeah, in their brains the or their needle. livers haven't or their prostates. Silence, haven't you seen Silence of the Lambs? <laughs> So, okay, so the most common uh, natural or synthetic form of vitamin E is 400 IUs. If I'm right, the um, the I, one IU or three IUs is one microgram. No, it's so, one milligram of DL alpha tocopheryl acetate. So the IU was defined as the synthetic form. Oh. And what we've said is what people need is 15 milligrams of RRR, which is the natural form of alpha okay. tocopherol. Okay. And if you are going to buy supplements, then the cheaper ones are the synthetic. And the synthetic ones, half of the number of milligrams there are actually the kind that the body can use. Now, when you eat them, all of them get absorbed and the body gets rid of the other half. So it's kind of wasteful in that sense. Right. But I, I think it's important to really eat a good diet is what it comes down to. Yeah. But, but if you do want to su supplement, I think if I, if I remember correctly, you said that you, you kind of use up about 15 milligrams a day. And so that so taking 50 milli 15 milligrams a day would just top you off. But if you are already deficient, you probably need to take more because you want a net gain every day. So maybe you want to take 20 milligrams a day. So 15 is burned off and five will be stored in fat. What do you think? Well, except it doesn't actually get stored. And that's a study I just did. Um, we are not sure what is happening to vitamin E once you eat it? Uh, it was a very interesting study. We used stable isotopes. We ran the study at the NIH Clinical Center. We gave vitamin E intravenously in a special emulsion that looked like um, the form you would be absorbing chylomicrons from the intestine. Mm -hmm. And what we found is that you absorbed about half of the amount of vitamin E you eat Mm -hmm. It appears in the plasma very quickly, and over about 48 hours, about half of it disappears. And then it was it was a study my my uh, staff didn't enjoy doing because we then measured it in the urine and the feces. Where did my label go? Right, and um, we couldn't find it. So 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 the whole. You know, I remember a long, long time ago, probably 25 years ago, I started taking um, a fairly large daily dose of vitamin E. And I remember my doctor, Dr. Swift, saying to me, be careful with that. That's fat soluble. You don't just, you, you store, it gets stored up. Unlike B, now we know even B6 can, if you don't drink enough water, B vitamins don't come out of you either. But that's another discussion. So what you're saying is, it really isn't, it's not storing itself up day in and day out where you're going to have this overload in your body. It's, that's exactly right. We were quite surprised with vitamin K. It's even faster than vitamin E. So that's why it's important to eat your green leafy vegetables every day. Vitamin E appears in the plasma and it, that protein is critical for keeping the concentrations even. And most people look when you measure their plasma, like they've got okay levels in the plasma, but we don't know 
what are the tissues that need it? Right. You know, is it your muscle? Is it your brain? Um, where is it going? We, I've probably done one of the few studies where we took people apart and measured different parts of their body to see how much vitamin E in each one of those organs. Um, we did this almost 20 years ago now. And it's one of those things where we were very appreciative that people who had been diagnosed with cancer uh, agreed to make to take the label to coverall, so that once they passed away, they could dedicate their bodies to science, and we could measure how much vitamin E is there. But it wow. was only a handful of people. But gave us huge insights into understanding vitamin E is in every cell in your body. There's different organs that need more. And clearly we're learning the brain. The brain uses up most of the oxygen the body uses. I think that's surprising. Yeah, yeah. And there you go, the antioxidant uh, production in the brain. I wanna take a last commercial break. When we come back, I have two questions. The first one is, does the microbiome play any kind of role in the absorption of vitamin E? And the second question is, if people have been subclinically deficient for most of their lives and they manifest some neural um, issues, maybe uh, nutritional neuropathies, does taking vitamin E help them? Uh, re even re re If not, uh, slow the progression down, reverse it. Stay tuned. We're going to answer those questions on the other side. Stay tuned. Guys, you've heard about this revolutionary acoustic wave technology that improves your sexual performance. It's been used in Europe for 20 years and has a 90% success rate of reversing symptoms of ED. Even if you're not suffering from ED, it can take you back to peak sexual performance of your younger days. The Phoenix uses powerful sound waves to clear plaque blockage and substantially increase blood flow. It's easy to use, has no side effects, and can be done in the privacy of your own home. Doctors have been charging thousands of dollars for these treatments. Go to shrnetwork.biz phoenix and use the code SHR for a special Special superhuman deal. Regain your sexual prowess today. My friends over at Bioptimizers, makers of industry-leading digestive supplements, have created a special recipe for you that helps boost brain performance in the morning. They make products Primergen V and Primergen M, potent liquid vitamins and mineral formulas loaded with absorbable vitamin Bs and trace minerals in a fulvic and humic acid base. You stack that with three capsules of Capex, their enzyme and energy supplement, and the effect is even stronger. You'll be buzzing without jitters or any negative side effects for hours. Bioptimizers call calls this the Brain Boost Stack, and they're running a special promotion for you at shrnetwork.biz slash brain stack. That's S-H-R-N-E-T-W-O-R-K dot B-I-Z slash B-R-A-I-N-S-T-A-C-K. You can get an additional 10% off from the normal package price with the coupon code SHR10. It's a powerful way to get your brain going and optimize your daily focus, memory, and performance. Everybody wants to feel better, be healthier, and happier. If you don't sweat profusely on a regular basis, you won't feel as good as you could. Studies have shown the power of infrared sauna. Infrared penetrates one to two inches into the body. It helps those with back pain, fibromyalgia, arthritis, depression, and anxiety. Patients get relief from infrared sauna. The Good Health Sauna has been shown to be an exercise mimetic, conveying many of the same benefits as cardio. There are a lot of reasons people buy a Good Health Sauna, but the bottom line is you will be a much happier, healthier person by using the Good Health Sauna every day. You'll crave it, you'll love it, and it will be the best purchase you have ever made. Good Health Saunas provide commercial-grade saunas for in-home and commercial use, backed by the best lifetime warranty in the industry. Un match customer service and the best financing makes owning one easy and will fit any budget. Go to goodhealthsauna.com slash superhuman radio to learn more and save 25% off. Proper hydration can lead to improved endurance, performance, and recovery. When we sweat, we lose valuable electrolytes that must be replaced. That's why Element created a zero sugar science-backed ratio of electrolytes that you can add to your water. It comes in three flavors. Sample them all risk-free with the Element Variety Pack. Carl's favorite is raspberry free shipping on all u.s orders go to shrnetwork.biz slash lmnt and get yours today 
Want to improve mental energy and focus? Try the new Superhuman Stack from Pure Nootropics. Stack Dynamin, Salbutamin, Theocrine, and Palmitoyl Ethanolamide together and feel the lights go on in your brain. Find your perfect mix of these four. Carl likes one cap of each and two caps of Dynamin. Bam! Lights on. Go to shrnetwork.biz slash superhuman stack, all one word, today, and get yours for 25% off plus free shipping. That's shrnetwork.biz slash superhuman stack. I love beef. And if you love beef, listen up. I've discovered the best tasting beef in the world, and that's not an exaggeration, at Piedmontese.com. The Piedmontese breed is famous from Italy for being lean and unbelievably tender with half the fat and calories of traditional beef. Even typically tough cuts are tender when it comes from the Piedmontese cows. And for the first time ever, Piedmontese cows are being raised here in the USA. Get 25% off all beef and free shipping on orders of $100 or more at Piedmontese.com with code SHR. Go to P I E D S. M-O-N-T-E-S-E dot com and use code SHR today. You will never eat any other type of beef ever again. You're listening to the Superhuman Channel. Don't hate us because we feel good. Welcome back to Superhuman Radio. This is a fascinating discussion, far more fascinating than I thought the discussion about the study was going to become. You know, vitamin E is one of those things that... It falls into favor, it falls out of favor, it falls into favor, it falls out of favor. Um, I don't think people realize how critical it is. So we've learned a lot about vitamins and the microbiome. The microbiome selectively absorbs things or it doesn't absorb things. Is there any component of the microbiome that we know can either make someone not absorb vitamin E? Um, it's an interesting question. I've thought about it, but we haven't figured out how to do the study. Um, since vitamin E is fat soluble, to have bacteria and vitamin E together in an anaerobic environment um, couldn't get somebody excited enough. So if any of your listeners have uh, interest in this area, it's wide open for research. Yeah, it, it, we, we, we've learned it about vitamin D. There is a, uh, uh, there is a, um, a microbial dysbiosis, if you will, that uh, keeps people from absorbing um, orally presented uh, vitamin D. And since they're fat soluble, I kind of feel like maybe there's, there's something to that. I, I just don't know. So yeah. what we discovered with vitamin E is you have to have fat for um, – digestion, so pancreatic enzymes, bile, those help vitamin E get into the intestinal cell. And then the intestinal cell has to package the vitamin E appropriately with other fat. And it takes probably eight to nine hours for the vitamin E to get out of the intestine into the circulation. So a lot of time, and a lot of place that various things with vitamin E could be involved. So I suffer from a, a nutritional neuropathy I have yet to be able to figure out. In fact, uh, Daniel uh, Herans is going to be on. He's with a wonderful company in the UK called Chronomics, and they do some very, very nice epigenetic testing. And I just got my test results yesterday. I haven't had a chance to look at them. But I'm hoping that it gives me some peak and my, my sister was misdiagnosed with Parkinson's disease. We have the same problem, my sister and I. I just didn't get, I didn't fall into the hands of a well-meaning but misguided physician who put her on very powerful uh, carbidopa, levodopa, and that just destroyed her. I mean, her life, she, she, she's gone now. And it was all because of the treatment. It wasn't because I'm living proof. I've got it. Um, but I know it's a nutritional neuropathy, but I haven't been able to figure out yet. So, uh, you know, I, I, when I do my show, I'm also <laughs> I'm also a viewer. And I'm thinking, wow, what if vitamin E deficiency is the reason I have this sensation on my hands, like I'm wearing gloves? Could it be? And if it is, does taking enough vitamin E to satisfy what I've been missing could could it possibly reverse it? Um, the short answer is maybe, and um, so. The symptoms in humans were discovered in children who had fat malabsorption syndromes. Uh, Ron Sokol in the early 80s was studying 
peripheral neuropathy with no known etiology, which basically means that the kids' hands and feet, they would lose the ability to feel. And then you can't stand if you can't feel where your feet are. And so the disorder is called ataxia with vitamin E deficiency. And basically what they found is that some of the people actually had a defect in the tocopherol transfer protein. And if you eat a diet that's high in vitamin E, you don't need that protein. There's enough that just randomly goes where it should that it's okay. But if you're eating a regular diet like the rest of the members of your family, those kids would end up with neurologic abnormalities. They would be, I mean, I saw one child that was in a wheelchair at age six because of this disease. And basically it, it becomes horrifying because you could do fine if you ate a gram of vitamin E a day. And that's for somebody who has this specific genetic abnormality. There are other genetic abnormalities that were described where they have problems. Um, so they have no lipoproteins besides HDL. Those people need to eat 10 grams of vitamin E a day. Wow. And you can stop the neurologic abnormalities. One of the things that goes wrong is the eyes. It's a, a disorder called retinitis pigmentosa, yeah, where the vitamin E is necessary to protect the retina. And basically it's an oxidative stress disorder. And so, I mean, one of the things that I thought was really interesting about the zebrafish work is that we're looking at systems that cause those sensory neurons to form. I mean, I'm, basically we're looking at stem cells neurologic stem cells that are forming outside the edges of the brain that become essentially all the organs in the whole zebrafish body. So right. I'm back to my zebrafish, which is such a fantastic model. But um, like I said, um, vitamin E, my husband calls it my hobby. I, I think it's just fascinating. And I have few more things to learn about it, but we're, we're going to, but when, one last thing I'd like to sort of close Please. with, we took some of those zebrafish. I said 80% of them die or um, were malformed by five days. We've took the 20% that looked okay and said, okay, we're giving you good food now and we're going to see how you do. And then a week later, a week later, so they would be essentially teenage kids now. <laughs> we gave them a test to see how well they could essentially learn. They couldn't learn. They did not learn as well as their cohorts. So what I think is the most scary thing about vitamin E deficiency and inadequate intakes, it is a critical window during development that you have to have it there. It's exactly the story we see with folic acid, that if you don't have it, you have these horrible defects that are happening during the formation of the baby. And I think the same thing is happening we can see it in the zebrafish, and now I'm hot on the trail of being able to define exactly what happens. Well, I'm going to buy, after today's show, I have a source for bulk powder vitamins, and I'm going to buy uh, a couple uh, hundred grams of vitamin E, and I'm going to start taking it daily for the next couple months and, and longer. I'm just going to start. I'm going to add it in, and... I'm going to contact you maybe in a couple months and see if I notice it. because I've tried everything. I have a, an entire catalog of studies on nutritional neuropathies and I've tried everything, but I've never thought about using vitamin E and I'm going to take K with it. I'm going to take high dose of E. I'm going to take, I'm going to take a, a K2 a complex, a, a K complex. Um, and I already take a couple grams of vitamin C a day. So I'll just stick with that. 
I'm excited. I am probably more excited about today's show than my listeners. <laughs> so I really want to well, tell you how much I appreciate you coming on today. Well, it was very fun talking with you, Carl. Thank you for having me and letting me bubble about vitamin E. <laughs> oh, uh, Marat, I'm going to be in touch. I have a funny feeling. I think that you're going to change uh, some 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 quandaries that I've been fighting with over here. Thank you so much. We'll talk Thank again you. soon. Okay. All right, we're going to take one quick commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to have uh, Dr. Danny from Chronomics on. Many of you have been waiting for your tests. Um, I have good news. They're being shipped. Some of you have already uh, received them. I received mine. Uh, I haven't had a chance to go through it yet because I know I have to fill out a questionnaire before I get started. Uh, but, ah, and Dr. Seeds is going to be here too. Perfect. Dr. Seeds is walking through an airport. So let's just take this real quick commercial break and we'll be right back talking about chronomics. Stay tuned. Mind Bullet is a Kratom product derived from the coffee family to boost energy and creative juices. Mind Bullet comes in both pill and liquid form for the ultimate pre-workout supplement. When needing a little pick-me-up or to get through the morning fog, Mind Bullet will set your productive course fast. Go to shrnetwork.biz slash mindbullet, all one word, today, and save 20%. No subscription required. That's shrnetwork.biz slash mindbullet. Get yours today. Today. Guys, you've heard about this revolutionary acoustic wave technology that improves your sexual performance. It's been used in Europe for 20 years and has a 90% success rate of reversing symptoms of ED. Even if you're not suffering from ED, it can take you back to peak sexual performance of your younger days. The Phoenix uses powerful sound waves to clear plaque blockage and substantially increase blood flow. It's easy to use, has no side effects, and can be done in the privacy of your own home. Doctors have been charging thousands of dollars for these treatments. Go to shrnetwork.biz slash phoenix and use the code SHR for a special superhuman deal. Regain your sexual prowess today. Quest Nutrition makes bar Bars, cookies, chips, and pizzas out of complete dairy-based proteins. Our products minimize net carbs and sugar without sacrificing taste. Each delicious chocolate-flavored chip, cookie chunk, and crunchy crumble is custom-made to maintain Quest macros. It's time to enjoy foods that work for you, not against you. It's time to enjoy your Quest. You've heard me talk about the chill pill on the show and how effective it is at helping people who suffer from social anxiety or sometimes when you just want to take the edge off uh, to a long, stressful day. Well, listen to this story from Dylan Goutreau. Definitely takes anxiety away, which I have a long history of. Having started out at two milligrams a day of Xanax, that was at eight years old, and so I stopped using benzos three years ago. Extremely difficult. Yeah, so I spent about three years trying to find anything and everything I could that would be healthy for me um, to help with anxiety. Because I'm talking, you know, full, full out panic attack. The the chill pill was the first thing that I found that actually, in the middle of a panic attack, I can take, and it definitely uh, subsides. Go to drseeds.com. That's D. -R R-S-E-E-D-S.com. Use coupon code SHR and save 20% off your first bottle of the chill pill. Check it out. I promise this is one supplement that delivers. New Mass Pro Synthogen X2 just upped its own legendary game. To distance itself even further from the rest of the pack, Synthogen X2 now has double the key active ingredients. If you've ever wondered what steroid-like recovery feels like, Synthogen X2 delivers. See why others compare it favorably to powerful bodybuilding drugs at Synthogen.com. Mass Pro Synthogen. When you train with it, you'll gain with it. I love beef. If you love beef, listen up. I've discovered the best tasting beef in the world, and that's not an exaggeration, at Piedmontese.com. The Piedmontese breed is famous from Italy for being lean and unbelievably tender with half the fat and calories of traditional beef. Even typically tough cuts are tender when it comes from the Piedmontese cows. And for the first time ever, Piedmontese cows are being raised here in the USA. Get 25% off all beef and free shipping on orders of $100 or more at Piedmontese.com with code SHR. Go to P I E D M O N T E S E dot com and use code SHR today. You will never eat any other type of beef ever again. This is the Superhuman Channel, doing reps with the weight of the world. All right, we're going to have to adjust some audio here. We have Dr. Seeds is walking through an airport trying to make a flight. I'm assuming he's on his way out to California. And then we have uh, Dr. Uh, Haran's uh, Danny out in uh, the UK. 
uh, talk. D Dr. Seeds, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Oh, great. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Your tie, yeah. Bow tie matches your mask. That's pretty cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we, what, what airport are you in, Bill? Uh, where am I right now? Phoenix. Phoenix. Phoenix, okay, on his way out to the West Coast. Okay. All right, so we have you both on the show because uh, we had no, quite a few any, people. I don't have luggage. This is it. I know. Use the elevator. Oh. Sorry. Uh, we had a few people uh, take advantage of the special offer uh, that Chronomics offered my audience. And um, it took a long time for people to get their kits. So first and foremost, let's address that turnaround, Danny, because it happened right during COVID. And I know that played a role in this. What happened? Why did it take four months for people to get their results? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much, first of all, Carl, for, for having us in the show again. And thanks so much, Dr. Seeds, also for making the effort to, to speak from the airport. That's <laughs> incredible. I know it's been a, probably a very long day. Um, so yeah, as you said, as you said, Carl, I'm really glad to announced that all the epigenetic results uh, have now uh, been released and that uh, hopefully everyone should have received their results. So if there are, if there are any issues with anyone, uh, please do let us know and we'll be very fast at uh, sorting them out. Um, and before saying anything else, I also wanted to very sincerely apologize uh, to those of you that were uh, waiting longer than expected for receiving your epigenetic results. Uh, because at Chronomics, we, we always strive uh, to, to give our users the best experience with our products. And, you know, this time, as we will discuss in a second, it hasn't been the time. Uh, it hasn't been the case. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll go into that in, in a second. Uh, and, you know, I'm really happy that this is all uh, sorted now and that hopefully you're all now enjoying your epigenetic results. So, um, obviously, at Chronomics, we, we hold tight our values as well. Uh, we like to be honest, we like to be transparent, uh, we like to care and champion the individual as well. Uh, and that's why I wanted to, to go into the details of why, why this delay and, and be completely transparent with, with those of you that were waiting uh, longer than expected for, for that right, turnaround because, time. Because you, you had been delivering results on these tests prior to this. How long did it normally take to turn around an epigenetic test before the, all this catastrophe? Yeah, so before COVID, the, the turnaround time was uh, normally six to eight weeks. Um, and obviously, some of the people uh, have been waiting now longer than that. Um, not anymore, uh, thankfully. Uh, but yeah, as, as you mentioned, you know, COVID has been the, the main reason uh, for this. It's been very challenging times uh, for everyone, uh, both, I guess, at the at the company level, but also uh, at the personal level for some of us. Um, so, you know, difficult decisions need to be made. So for example, we went through a lockdown in the UK, which impacted our operations and our labs. Uh, and more importantly, we also had to repurpose a lot of our uh, testing resources from our labs to deal with this emergency. Uh, so mm -hmm. among other things, for example, we've been helping the, the UK government to scale up COVID-19 testing. And, and this obviously impacted our, our processes uh, on the epigenetic side of things. Um, and personally, as, as you know, Carl, and as I told you, I wanted to be here a couple of weeks ago uh, to explain to people where, where we were with, uh, with the results. Uh, but unfortunately, I got, COVID, I got COVID myself, so I was COVID positive. Uh, I was fortunate enough to, to fortunate enough to have relatively mild symptoms. I can tell you it is definitely not a flu. <laughs> so try to try to avoid it uh, because it's, it's no fun to go through it. I am very lucky that I'm you know young and apparently healthy enough to, to go through it relatively quick. Um, but it's also you know I'm, I'm happy to share my personal experience through it if, if that is interesting as well. Uh, but now we're here. Uh, and, you know, because we know that the, the epigenetics, as I'm sure we'll discuss in a second, is now more important than ever. Uh, I've been personally pushing really hard to, to increase lab bandwidth, uh, lab bandwidth for this, uh, and we managed to get it through at the end. Uh, and I also wanted to reassure everyone that uh, for those of you that were affected by the delay, uh, that this has not affected at all your results. Uh, so your results will be as saccharide as ever, because when we basically sample you, we took a snapshot of, of your epigenome uh, and you will get uh, the latest the latest results also with, with the latest improvements that we've been doing 
uh, in our epigenetic biomarkers. So 23andMe sends me new information <clears throat> as they correlate genes with diseases. I get emails all the time from 23andMe saying, hey, now you can see if you're prone to, and I, I don't know, if the, but Parkinson's disease. Do you want to know this? And then you say yes, and you can read it. So is that how chronomics will be as well as, as you put together and connect dots on disease states and, and genetics and epigenetics? Will people get an email from time to time say, hey, now we can tell you if you're prone to this, check it out. Yes, absolutely. Obviously, we'll be looking at uh, slightly different things at predispositions, as we've been discussing in the past. So we're giving you an updated version of, of your health uh, with this epigenetic results. Uh, but as you correctly pointed out, uh, you know, genetic testing companies, uh, you know, as, as more knowledge is available uh, because the raw core data that has been generated for, uh, for example, someone like you, Carl, is already there. As more knowledge is available, these insights and, and this added value can be made accessible to those users. And uh, we do the same at Chronomics. Um, so we are developing, uh, we keep developing novel epigenetic biomarkers. Uh, so now, obviously, for different reasons, uh, you know, partially driven by COVID, but also because of its important importance in the in the aging process we're really interested in the immune system for example uh so we are we're working on on developing uh new epigenetic biomarkers uh that will quantify very accurately the immune system and that would also make available to everyone uh that has taken a acronomics epigenetic test to to date um so yeah obviously i'm, I'm really excited about uh maximizing the the value that we can get out of every single every single sample. And as we've discussed in the past, uh, I think it's also important to mention the type of data that has been generated, right? I know that <laughs> get very excited about this, but I, I really want people to understand this and, and appreciate what's happening behind the scenes. Uh, so as you know, we've generated uh, the most comprehensive snapshot of the human epigenome that can be generated to date. Uh, so we've measured more than 20 million epigenetic markers uh and that means that you know the raw data that is behind the scenes powering the biomarkers that we have now but also the ones that will come very soon uh you know it's it's super super useful uh and you know as, as you said carl more more knowledge is available and we keep advancing uh the research uh also internally uh we'll be releasing all these new insights to to our users you want to add anything to that uh, dr seeds No, I don't know if you can hear me, <laughs> Doctor Doctor Seeds. Can you hear me? Okay, I I guess he doesn't want to add anything to that. Um, what about the uh, so so Rigo Vargas is a big fan of the show. He's actually been on the show in February when uh, I asked for people in the audience to talk about their blood flow restriction training with the BFR bands. Um, he he was a. Um, he says, maybe I misunderstood the purpose of the test. I thought this test was going to analyze my genetics and give me detailed information on what's going on inside my body. I was looking for specific recommendations like you shouldn't eat nuts, red meat is bad for you, and so on. Um, is that something that we can determine from an epigenetic test, that what, what, what certain things that intersect lifestyle that will take a toll on us versus are beneficial to us? Yeah, absolutely. I think that that's a great question. And um, first of all, I wanted to clarify again the uh, difference between genetics and epigenetics, because I think Vigo mentioned uh, genetics, but obviously we look, uh, we focus more on epigenetics. And um, so with genetics, you're looking at predispositions from birth, right? You're looking at your core genetic information that you're born with, you inherit uh, from your parents, and that gives you a certain predisposition to certain conditions or to react better to certain drugs or or supplements, et cetera, et cetera. What we look at is epigenetics, which is an updated version of, of that information. So essentially not uh, kind of like the core genes that you have started life with, but how those genes are being shaped and, and changed their expression and, and their function uh, over time as, as you you know change your lifestyle as well. So there, there are key differences in that. And that's the reason why, you know because we can take into account this lifestyle environment and how it's uh, basically affecting your health over time. We can determine things like biological age, uh, metabolic status, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, but then I think he raises a really good question around uh, recommendations. 
And um, basically, Acronomics, we offer uh, very, I would say, basic at the moment recommendations. Um, so obviously, what, what is powering those recommendations is actually quite complex. So behind the scenes, what is happening is that uh, we are taking into account your epigenetic profile and also uh, some of the information that you're providing the questionnaire to essentially assess what are the main gaps or the big gains that you can have uh, to try to impact your epigenetics, right? To try to impact, for example, your biological age, to try to impact uh, your metabolic risk, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But having said that, this is no easy task. Um, and I think, you know, other genetic testing companies, for example, have, uh, you know, make huge claims in terms of what is possible uh, from DNA information. So there are, you know, companies out there that say, just by looking at your DNA, I can tell you how many grams of broccoli you should eat or things like that. Um, you know, there is just not enough scientific information and scientific knowledge today to do those sort of claims. So at Chronomics, we are very, as I said, honest and, you know, we are scientists above all and we, you know, all the data we provide, we want it to be scientifically grounded. Um, so this is an area, uh, basically improving recommendations based on epigenetic information that we are working very hard on. Uh, and as I said, you know, our algorithms are already starting to, to recommend some things, uh, but obviously, you know, they are picking up mainly stuff that um, kind of confirms things that we know, right? Things around diet, well, well, things around well, as, as you build sleep. As you build your database of people, and as those people contribute information through the diary that you ask them to fill out, I would imagine over the course of the next year or so, you'll start to send out, hey, you know, you, this may interest you. You you may have a predisposition to this, or you can start making more recommendations as you're as you're you can connect more points. It, wouldn't that be true? Yeah, no, that's that's absolutely true, Carl. That's uh, that's exactly what's happening right now as we speak. So um, you know, the moment that and and this happens in real time, right? So we keep collecting a lot of data uh, from our users, and we keep collecting a lot of information about the types of interventions that have worked in people in order to improve, uh, you know, these different risk factors at the epigenetic level. So we're starting to see, you know, people, uh, for example, going through different types of diets or, or different types of, uh, you know, exercise regimes or specific anti-aging programs. And we are collecting data both before and after they go through this, right? So that is solid objective scientific evidence of the stuff that is working at the molecular level to improve your health. Uh, so we feedback that back, that information for this uh, recommendation algorithms. Uh, so everything that we provide has uh, a solid scientific basis that we've observed, uh, you know, some effect at the molecular level. And that's why, you know, I know that people are expecting to find the, the you know, the all the solutions very soon. Uh, but yeah. we also like to be, you know, honest about the way that we work and, and in terms of the, the quality of the data and the scientific robustness of the data uh, that we provide. But having said that, I think it's very exciting times because we're we're starting to see a strong signatures of, um, you know, for example, specific types of exercise at the epigenetic level. Um, and the good thing about the way that we work is that, uh, you know, you don't have to wait one, two, five, ten years until these insights, you know, um, have been like published and then peer reviewed and then Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. As soon as we trust them uh, and we have validated them, we we give access in real time to all our users uh, for them to benefit from them. So as you said correctly, Carl, uh, you know all all the users can uh, can expect that over time uh, these recommendations will will come up with uh, potentially surprising things as well as we as we validate more anti aging interventions. So, Doctor Seeds, do you think uh, it's better for a person to use this test? in conjunction with uh, the interpretation of a physician and maybe even a, a regular DNA test to coincide with it. What do you think? Um, I think, Carl, that the, um, I, unless they're, as far as the real DNA test, I don't think so. I mean, it's not going to change anything that's going to be done to try to reverse the epigenome. Um, I think it can be useful information if there are people, if you have inheritable problems or, you know, past history type of changes that, that may be significant or things you're looking for. But I think the biggest thing with this testing is people, you know, people who think they're healthy and who think that they, they, they're living the right lifestyle, they may realize that uh, their biological clock is telling them that they need to make some changes. And this is a way 
you know, just like we've talked about, this is the beginning of starting to look at things a little differently and focusing on things that you can change to try to change this epigenome. And, and just with the biological clock by itself, that's a tremendous amount of information to give somebody. And there are a lot of ways to work on that, you know, to, to try to improve that. And that's working through diet. It's working through exercise. I think it's giving you indications that maybe some of the things you think you're doing correctly and that are traditionally the things we look at are not working. And, and that makes sense to me. So, yeah, I think I didn't, I didn't quickly, I didn't quickly to that. Um, I think, you know, Dr. Sitz makes a very strong point around people, you know, are, or we try to get very obsessed with like predicting what's going to work, right? So, okay, take a test and tell me what I should do. But the reality is that doing that is actually quite difficult. But what we can do is to measure what is working. So, you know, if you take a test now, uh, we might be able to tell you certain things, but then you will go and do those things plus potentially other things that you think are going to work, right? And by taking a second test, then you're going to basically get empirical evidence and objective evidence at the molecular level of whether that has worked or not. And what we are currently providing us of today with chronomics is with the most accurate biomarkers for the main risk factors for disease. So things like biological age, a few years ago, it was completely unthinkable that we could quantify the aging process in humans so accurately. And now we have a way to basically, and a test to basically go and say, well, you know, you're trying all these different things because, you know, acting on aging is not something easy. It's not something that you're going to solve with one little change. Uh, it's going to require a whole range of, of different types of things that need to implement in your, in your life uh, and potentially also in the future with, with some drugs as well. Um, but we have a way to objectively measure if it has worked for you. So if we if you've changed your diet, if you've you know changed your exercise, if you're trying some specific supplements or, or new drugs, you you are able to see if it's working or not uh, when you take a second test. And I so, wanted so, to use this this so really, so as well. really the, the real value. Yeah. The, uh, and I'll give you your time back. I feel like a politician. I'll give you your time back in a moment. <laughs> uh, if, if the real value then of this test is it's a more a, a more precise way to gauge biological age. And in and of itself, that tells you what you need to know, but it doesn't give you the guidance on how to fix it. You have to kind of put that together yourself. Rigo Vargas is saying, if my results show the markers that contribute to my biological age being higher than my chronological age, how do I find out what those markers are? And then that obviously by learning what those markers are, then you can go, oh, I need to start doing this better or eat more fish or something like that. What do you think? That's right. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a fantastic question, uh, Rigo. Thanks so much. Um, so the good thing about the data we've generated for that uh, is the fact that, you know, we have information around specific epigenetic marks, millions of them in a specific parts of your DNA, right? Whether they are close to certain genes, for example, genes that are involved in, in metabolic pathways or genes that are involved in you know, detoxifying specific chemicals, we know that. And we are seeing epigenetic changes in the regulation of those specific genes. So we have a lot of information behind the scenes that maybe when you, you know, originally access the product, you don't appreciate because you see, you know, a big numbers in terms of like your main risk factors. Uh, but we actually have like genus specific information on all of this. So we are indeed able to go and say, well, for Rigo, these are the specific epigenetic marks uh that normally change during the aging process and that in his case are up or down uh when compared with with the average person uh for for that age and we provide with some of that information in in a in a part of the product that we called um chromosome aging where you can essentially visualize the specific bits in your in your different chromosomes for which you are younger or older uh but behind the scenes this information is also what's powering this recommendation algorithms that uh, that I'm telling you, Carl. Uh, so, you know, what we do is that we take that information and we maximize uh, the amount of, of predictive capability that we can get uh, to this date. So, um, and also I think it's important to mention there are many people out there that love to, you know, serve through their raw data uh, and access kind of like what's happening behind the scenes. Uh, and if Rigo, if you are interested, this is something also that we can provide you uh, just access to, to your core epigenetic information so you can spend hours and hours uh basically learning more about about this 
So he can. So there's an. It, it's called uh, epigenetic aging. Did you say that's the area of the website where you can understand why you were given Pro chromosome aging? Yeah, yeah. Chromosome. There is an entire an entire section on that. So he can log into that and he can see why he was viewed as being older than he really is. I'm assuming that is what he's saying here. So he can log into that. He can see the raw data then. He can yeah, see right. part of the, yeah part of that data, and then if he's interested in um, in learning more about it, then we can provide with with further information as well. Okay, so he says I see CHR one through CHR twenty two, but he really doesn't know what that means. What uh, the, the, again? Does he need the the help of an expert to help inter interpret this? Perhaps his physician. Yeah, that's again, uh, Rigo. I'm really happy to. Um, have a, a conversation basically with you. So we've actually, um, I, I don't think we've, we've said that yet, but uh, we have, when we send the email to those people uh, that, that were watching the show and are receiving now the results, um, we're also offering uh, basically a complimentary call uh, with, with myself to go deeper into this insight. So obviously, you know, different people have uh, different levels of wanting to go deep into this. So uh, if we go, if you want to, uh, you know, learn more about uh you know these specific bits uh, how they're changing with with age uh we can go into more details into what uh chromosome one means chromosome uh, 22 means uh and if you're further interested in that we can even like start to look at uh genes and and, and things like that so i'll be very happy to if you want to to get a call with me i'll be delighted to to discuss this with you that's great that's great um so in summary people are getting their results now do you have to fill out the questionnaire, the diary, in order to view your results? Yeah. So the normal flow is that people, uh, you know, uh, input the, the the information in the questionnaire, and I want to make it very clear that this does not impact at all the results from from the epigenetics or the biomarkers. So your biological age, your metabolic status, uh, your alcohol uh, footprint, etc., uh, etc. Et they all are only based on the DNA from your saliva sample. So they are completely independent from the questionnaire information. The reason why we but, collect- but, 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 that, but, does, but does completing the questionnaire help give you more precise and valuable direction? See, what I'm thinking is, I didn't right. I looked at that and I didn't look at the questionnaire. I didn't fill out the questionnaire. I thought I'll just do this this weekend when I have time. Some people may bypass that and just go look at their results and there won't be a lot of recommendations because there's not a lot of information about you Correct. and what you do and so on. So filling out that questionnaire completely and thoroughly uh, probably plays a large role in what it tells you you can do uh, to help yourself. Am I, am I correct about that? That's absolutely correct, Carl. So what the questionnaire does is that it powers other aspects of the product. So for example, the recommendations that we were talking about, uh, we're still not able to only from your DNA, you know, tell you you're doing 33 minutes of vigorous exercise, right? So if we have that information reported from you, um, then we are able to power other aspects like this recommendation algorithms that that combine epigenetics with, with uh, self-reported information, for example. Uh, but having having said that, you know, we really encourage people to take the questionnaire to to maximize, um, you know, the value that you get out of the product. Uh, Dr. C, do you want to add anything to that? I can't see facial expressions. Yeah, I, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I would be, I'll be happy to sit in with Danny on those calls and help people with Danny uh, as we go through this. So they, they get it. You know, Rico, all these people will be happy to help you and, and direct you how, in the right how, way. I, I think they'll get a lot out of it. And how, how should they reach out, Danny? How, how can they get in touch with you through the website? Yeah, so I believe at the moment they, they should have received uh, an email where there is a link to directly book uh, calls in my calendar. Um, and obviously, yeah, I'm, I'm more than happy to have, of course, Dr. Seeds uh, uh, also giving more the, the the kind of clinical doctor view because obviously my um, my research has been more on the on the epigenetic side of things. Uh, so I think it would be it would be fantastic to to have you as well, Dr. Seeds. Yeah, jump on that. Reach out if you got the if you got the email from Chronomics. There's a link there if you want to discuss your uh, and you need some expert advice. I remember seeing that now that you talk about it. 
uh, just get on their calendar and, and let them uh, walk you through this. What's the website people should be going to, uh, Dr. Seeds, if people want to get a chronomics test uh, of their own? I, I think it's now through chronomics. I don't I don't think we have that through uh, through your S through your uh, program. Right. So it's it's chronomics.com, right? C H R O N O M I C S dot com. Is that right, Danny? Yeah, that's right. And Correct. you can also reach us at info at chronomics.com. Uh, so we'll we'll have a team to to help you there if you have any any specific questions. And since you yeah. said uh Carl, you're gonna give me one minute, maybe I, I'm gonna uh, make a please. A little, a little announcement uh, sure. for those of you that, uh, that bought the chronomics test uh, through the show. Uh, so we've already discussed the, the complimentary calls. For those of you that you know, want to dive deeper into your epigenetic results, we'll be delighted to, uh, I'll be delighted to, to speak with you and uh, answer some of those specific questions and take all the feedback, which I'm sure you will have about things that you would like to see there in the product in the future. Uh, but also, um, we've been discussing how important it is to track over time epigenetics and how you get the you know the final value of the product is in taking a test doing something that changes your your lifestyle hopefully in the right direction and then measuring again to to be certain uh that you know you're heading in the right direction and as we've discussed in the past uh building your your digital twin and um you know we want to for those of uh, of those of you that uh, already uh bought the first test uh, with this uh, originally one of discount uh, that we offer in the past episodes, uh, we want to offer you uh, the same discount for the second test uh, because we want to help you to go through that uh, epigenetic journey. And I want to make it very clear that this is incredibly exclusive pricing. Uh, so you know, I think it's it's a fantastic opportunity. Um, you know that no one else is currently benefiting from, uh, and you know just because you guys. Uh, it's been amazing uh, to be here in the in the Superhuman Radio podcast, and um, because I know also that these people are really, really eager to, uh, you know, to, to keep on going in this uh, epigenetic testing um, journey. Uh, we want to also offer that from Chronomics. So, um, if you're interested in that second test, uh, just reach out to us and say uh, basically that, or I'm sure you will, we will have that information. But also say that you know you were you were watching the uh the show and that you you would like to take the second test and uh, our team will be able to help you with that i'm afraid to open mine bill i think it's going to say i'm 85. <laughs> all right he's getting out of the car uh so i think that <laughs> uh, he's laughing uh, it's uh, i'd rather be where you are today than where i am uh so uh the, the website is chronomics.com c-h-r-o-n-o-m-i-c-s.com and uh he Rigo says, I'm booking a session now, and I have my girlfriend, whom I bought a test for, doing the same. Yeah, there you go. And, I, and, and, and really, the real value of this test is that biological age, and it's a more precise way to give you a real, truly effective rating for your biological age. And then you got to change things. For me, i got to sit less. You know, I sit for hours, and I'm going to get a standing desk very shortly that I can do the show from. As I'm building a new studio, and the first thing I'm putting in is a standing desk. But that's it. <laughs> Go to chronomics.com, uh, book a, a call if you have already gotten a test, and also if you've already gotten a test, take advantage of this special pricing because buying a test and take testing vitamin D levels, for instance, and then supplementing and not testing again is useless. You don't know. Did it work? Did you take enough? Are you taking too much? So, you know, uh, these are, these tests are designed – to take snapshots at different points in your life so you can see what you're doing and how it's affecting you. And you know the things that you're doing that aren't good for you. You know them. You know, maybe your uh, highly restrictive diet because you're keto isn't really good for you. Just because it's, you, you know, it, it's the modern diet today that everybody loves, maybe it doesn't work for you. Maybe just because you lost a bunch of weight on it or you feel really strong, it's aging you faster. So, you, you know, a lot of us know the things that we need to change. And uh, when we change them, then we test again and we go, oh, that worked. Or no, that didn't work. I, it got worse. I got to do the opposite now. So I, I, I understand. And, and then as you gather more data, there'll be a lot more information available uh, to users as well. And they'll get access to that as time goes on. It's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for being here today, uh, Dr. Seeds. I know you're a world traveler and you're, 
you're in between flights and hopefully you're staying in, in Phoenix today and, and relaxing a little bit. Do you have a seminar there? Is that what it is? Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, okay. And that's it for today. Uh, thanks again, Danny, for coming on and talking about this. Thanks so much thanks. For, for having me, Cal. Thanks, thanks, everyone. Bill, see you soon. Right. Um, we're going we're gonna to call it a, a day and say thank you to everybody. And we'll see you tomorrow with more Superhuman Radio. Take care.